What's up guys, today I'm working on a 2011 Toyota Venza and I'm going to be changing the front brake pads. Okay, so the tools we're going to use are an impact here with a 19 millimeter uh, deep well socket. I use that for the key because this smaller side is a 19 mil. That's to get the wheels off. For the brakes, I'm using a 12 millimeter wrench. Uh, to speed things up, I use the impact or the right angle cordless, I should say. And then the C clamp is to push the pistons back in. So now we're going to. This vehicle has aftermarket wheels. These are a 20 inch rim. And with aftermarket wheels, sometimes you have to run a special lug nut. Uh, the seat of this lug nut is a different conical uh, degree than factory. So these are actually a 60 degree acorn nut that there is on here. It is a splined acorn nut. To get that off, you use a key. And inside here, there are splines. And that goes on. And then you use your standard four way or impact or whatever you're using to turn those off. Here is a shot of that hub centric ring in place. And notice that's what that spacer is taking up that slack where the material in the rim is larger to fit more vehicles with this same 501.14.3 lug pattern. Uh, so you just buy this simple little spacer here to fill that. Okay, I'm gonna start by taking off the two 12 millimeter bolts here at the top and bottom of the top half of the caliper. So if we're only doing the uh, pads, we don't have to take off the bracket. Got them loose, loose. I'll speed up with the impact. Set those out of the way, lift this straight up, tip it over. On Toyotas, they have these little tension springs. You pretty much can take them out with your fingers. Set those aside if you need to reuse them. The kit I have today doesn't need them. Pads are worn down. And this one was actually hitting the metal indicator. Making a squeal. Pads look okay. So we're gonna take out the hardware here. These are slides for the brakes. I always try not to damage them in case the new replacement units are garbage. That does happen. And those simply fit in there. With these little tension duct springs built into them. Yeah, this one looks damaged. Okay. And then when you take the old ones off, you want to orient the little finger, the indicator sound thing, to be dragging. So the rotor spins forward most of the time, and going forward down the road. And so you want that to be on the trailing edge of the brake pad. So this will go at the top on this vehicle. And you want them to be seated but not tight. This one feels tight. This moves all right. And then we got those tension springs to put in. And now we want to push the piston back. Uh, before we do that, I use the old brake pad. But we need to come up here and open this cap on the master cylinder. Now this one just pops on, no threads. Okay, set that aside. And that way fluid can come back up when we press on these two pistons. Okay, so I've decided to use my brake pad spreading tool. And what it does is it goes in between the um, solid area here and these pistons and it will expand as I thread it open. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this instead of the brake pad and all the other ways I used to do it. So I'm gonna set that in there center between the two and not exactly sitting on the bottom so it's a lot easier and then I'll start torquing it. And 
and you want it to be a roughly flush that looks pretty good take this back out of the way get it flush it looked great and now I'm gonna put it back down on top of this so we'll flip that over pushing the brake pads together there's no slides in where it's seated these have a slot in them flat area here and here top and bottom and that goes there so that when you turn the nut or the bolt it will pivot but it'll stop eventually onto this metal it also has a 17 millimeter sizing get that started get the bottom one started call on the walkie here Finish off the torque with a wrench. And that is the driver's side done. Again, press the brake pedal, get all the fluid back down in there before we're starting the next side. So I hope that this video has helped you. Uh, once you've worked on one import, it kind of seems like they're all about the same. Use a 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, we'll get those uh, top hats off that caliper. So uh, if you have any questions about what I've done here today, or maybe even a vehicle you would like to see worked on, uh, write, write that below. I'll check that out, try to get back with you. Um, stay tuned for other future content. We got a couple cars coming up that are a little more about aftermarket support, more so than your basic maintenance. So stay tuned, subscribe, that's what we liked, and I'll talk to you guys later.